Hi everyone. I'm going to talk to you about Maclaurin series, um, which are actually a special kind of Taylor series. And the idea of a Taylor series is you can take any function you'd like, almost, and represent it as an infinite polynomial. Now this might sound to you immediately like it's both intentionally making things more complicated than they need to be for no reason at all. Because why would you take a perfectly nice function like e to the 2x and represent it as something infinite? That seems needlessly complicated. And even if you could do it, why would you possibly want to do it? This is such a nice function to work with, and something infinite feels like it's going to be very difficult to work with. So before we even start, I just want to say a word about how does this make sense. In a lot of ways, math classes are like little tide pools where we introduce you to new kinds of things and problems in an environment that's safe, where you have tools for dealing with them. So you might think, like, why would I need a harpoon gun? Because it's just all of these harmless little fish. But if you go out swimming into the wilds of science, you might encounter problems in the real scientific world uh, for which you find you're not really equipped to handle. So for example, let's say you're doing some science and you discover that you need to find an integral for a function like this. This isn't the messiest looking thing in the world, but I think you'll find that if you try and find the integral, it's quite difficult. In fact, there is no known antiderivative of even just this first part, sine x squared. Uh, at least not a closed form one. So it's very easy to run into trouble quickly. But what if I told you that that ugly function could be approximated very closely by this polynomial? Notice it's not an infinite polynomial, it's just a sixth degree polynomial. Um, in that case, if we want to integrate this, really we can just integrate its approximate polynomial. So this integral is equal to approximately, let's see, I can just integrate term by term. One becomes x and x squared becomes one-third x cubed and so on, and then I would have a constant of integration out there. So one reason it's so convenient to be able to figure out what an infinite polynomial representation would be is it lets you make a polynomial representation that's just as accurate as you'd like. If you only need three terms, great, only do a quadratic representation. If you need more accuracy, you can add more terms. So rather than being something scary and pointless, it's actually very useful and quite friendly um, once you know the technique for finding the coefficients. Because it always helps to be able to visualize something, let me just show you a visual example. So here in red we've got e to the 2x. Um, if I wanted to make a tangent line representation, uh, I could form a tangent line. You already know how to do that. And as you recall, if we zoom into any differentiable function, it is locally linear, which means that the tangent line matches our original function very closely at any x values that are close to the point where we constructed it. The problem, of course, with a tangent line is that as you move away from where you constructed it, um, the curve curves away from your tangent line. A different way of putting that is you constructed your tangent line so that right at x equals 0, your line and the curve you want to represent have the same slope. But the problem is the original curve that you have, its slope changes as you move away. The slope is increasing. And we know that because it appears to be concave up here. So one way to think about this is what if we could tell our tangent line, we want you not just to have the same slope as the original function, but we want your slope to change in the same way that the original function slope changes as you move away from x equals zero. So, in other words, what if we could give them the same curvature, the same concavity? So, we could construct a quadratic representation, for example. And as you can see, now instead of a tangent line, I've got a, if I zoom out, you see it's a parabola. And the parabola is following my original curve pretty closely. And I could make a cubic representation. You can see the black line looks like a standard cubic. Or a fourth degree, or a fifth degree, or a sixth degree. So now that I'm at the sixth degree, you see, I can zoom out. I'm, I'm still not zoomed out that far. We're only going from negative 2 to positive 2 here. But nonetheless, you see, it matches my original function pretty closely. So again, that's the idea. The idea is we want an easy way to find a, an arbitrarily large degree polynomial that will let us represent our function. 